What's going on everyone? Combo here and it's been a while since my last video. Uh, about two months specifically. Um, been gaming here, watching anime there, and I'm still working despite what's going on in the world. Um, I've been active on Twitter, but Twitter doesn't require a massive amount of effort to shitpost, so to speak. Uh, but hey, here's a video after such a long hiatus, and for the topic of this video, I wanted to talk about an article I read over on VentureBeat. Now, the article is by Jeff Grubb, host of the How Games Make Money podcast, who's joined by the Coalition Operations Director Mike Crump and Xbox Marketing General Manager Ben Decker. The podcast and article focuses on Gears Tactics, but as the title implies, there are sections throughout that also cover Microsoft's Game Pass service and some of the effects that it has on gaming, such as how it allows developers to take a few risks when it comes to creating games. I'll be reading over specific sections of the article, so I won't be covering everything that was discussed, but I will have a link below for those who may want to read it in full detail. It'll also contain the podcast as well for those that want to give it a listen. I want to start with the section discussing how the Coalition isn't concerned when it comes to topping sales charts, though funny enough to some degree, Gears Tactics had top Steam sales charts just a few days before its release. Now I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but it was interesting nonetheless. Now onto the quote itself. We have certain expectations and we will measure against those in terms of unit sales, said Crump. But Game Pass just freezes up a little bit from having to be solely reliant on those kinds of metrics for success. But when we're deciding whether to make a game or not, it's nice to have all those different metrics for success and not be tied to just one measure of did you sell a certain number of units at a certain price point or not? Because I think it really allows us to take risk and try things that we wouldn't otherwise. Now, I feel so this quote in particular is pretty relevant at the moment. There's been a few instances where I've read comments centered on titles and game pads, such as Ori and the Will of the Wisps around when it released and how the games aren't selling. And if the games aren't selling, then they're not being supported by the player base. Some of the concern stems from those wanting the game to succeed, which is understandable. But there are those that kind of basically concern troll. I don't know the best way to put it. But yeah, uh, going by Crump's statement, Sales are not the end-all be-all when it comes to measuring success of a title in a service. Now, that's not to say sales are just irrelevant overall. After all, these are businesses wanting to make as much money as possible. But looking at the sales to form a narrative of flop or not for titles in Game Pass is a bit selective for the sake of making an argument, in my opinion. Though I will say it would be interesting to see some type of chart displaying various stats such as number of downloads, average hours played, or number of completions. Just some type of info to give insight on how the service is performing. I saw earlier that there is a most popular category, but you know specific numbers would still be interesting to read nonetheless. Another section of the article talks about the request of variety by those that are subscribed to the service. Quote, from a portfolio perspective, there's two big goals, said Decker. The first is that you always have to have something great to play so that there's a wide variety of genres and stuff for kids and core shooters. And we want to make sure that you have an access to some of your old favorites. But then we want to make sure that there's also something new to play. We look at feedback from our members who are very vocal about games and genres that they like to see. And so we listen pretty closely to that, end quote. Now, variety is the name of the game, no pun intended, when it comes to services like this, as it allows people to try out new genres and keep the servers feeling fresh. And I have to say, they've done a pretty good job at the moment, from fighters with Mortal Kombat X, RPGs with The Witcher 3, shooters with Doom plus Wolfenstein, and side-scrollers such as Shantae and Ori, just to name a few. And yes, I know Doom and Wolfenstein are leaving soon, but just saying, just saying. And as much as I have told myself I don't care about VR due to the price of entry, it would be interesting to see VR titles in a service if Microsoft ever adds support to the console. I mean, there's always Game Pass PC and adding VR games there, but I could definitely see an issue from the console crowd. Just look at how some are, some are currently handling the Gears tactics coming to PC first. The next section, and possibly the most important section in my opinion, touches up on the topic of smaller games versus bigger blockbuster titles, and whether or not if the creation of these small games would come at the cost of those bigger games. Quote, You know, it's really about both, said Decker. It really is. Because again, our members want to see both. That's the feedback we've heard loud and clear. They love discovering the sort of small developer with a game they've never heard of in a genre that they maybe didn't even know was a genre. 
and they love discovering quirkier indie games, but they also want to see bigger AAA or quadruple A hits in the service as well. The topic closes with, Decker says Microsoft wants Game Pass to feel similar in its variety to go into the movies. You can find some unique foreign film at the Art House Cinema, but then you also want to see the Avengers, end quote. Now, the reason I say this session is pretty important is due to the fact that since the acquisition of these new studios and Game Pass becoming more of a focused feature of the brand, there are those that feel as if the service and new studios would only bring double A low quality titles just to bolster up the numbers in the service. But as stated from the quote above, the goal is to have a mixture of both double A, indie, triple A, quadruple A, however you want to put it. And it's safe to say this mindset applies to both first party and third party entries to the service and if I'm to be completely honest I'm fine with that. I know AA versus AAA is a bit of a hot topic when it comes to what people want to see from the new studios with Xbox but if we're looking at it from a realistic approach from all the news on the crunch from studios such as Rockstar and Naughty Dog I really don't think Microsoft would be able to keep up with demand if every new game was striving to be AAA. I could be wrong given the size of the Xbox game studios though what 15 and counting, but honestly, in my opinion, the main thing people should be concerned about or focused on is that the games are of high quality, seeing as AAA doesn't equate to amazing. Look at Anthem and maybe Crackdown 3 if you want to include that. Now, that's not to say I don't want to see the next big blockbuster title like your Halos and your God of Wars. You know, I'm looking forward to The Last of Us Part 2, despite all the recent leaks that have been coming out. I'm simply not expecting to always get titles of the caliber. And again, if that was the case and we always got AAA, no complaints for me. I just want to put that out there. I just want games to be enjoyable overall, though. You know, the footage playing in the background comes from a indie game called The Outer Wilds. It isn't the biggest game in terms of scope and scale. Well, it's about space exploration and, you know, space is pretty big and, you know, but you get what I'm trying to say. It doesn't feature high profile voice actors like we had in Death, Strand Death Stranding or just actors in general, nor is it boasting the most detailed and realistic of visuals. But despite that, I'm really enjoying my time with the game as it's a different experience than what I'm personally used to playing these days. And toss in some lo fi beats playing through Spotify on the Xbox app, and it's, it's such a just different experience. It's mellow and it's just enjoyable. Um, and it's also kind of relaxing, minus, you know, getting blown up by supernovas, eat, eaten by space worms, black holes, and um, invisible space scoop that'll kill you if you get too close. But kind of run on tangent. So uh, I guess the close is whether it's indie, double A, triple A, or quadruple A, the main focus of games in the service and coming from Xbox Game Studios should be the quality of the titles, not where it sits on the A scale, so to speak. And again, I just want to repeat this again. Don't take this as me disregarding those that want to see the next AAA blockbuster, because I do too. I'm looking forward to Halo Infinite and Last of Us and Cyberpunk. It's just that the number of A's behind it, or at least the perceived number of A's, do not tell me if the story will be well written, whether or not it's a unique idea, and if the gameplay is enjoyable, and if the game will ship with as little bugs as possible. Let's not forget what happened with Fallout 76. You know, oddly enough, not too long ago, People were quoting Matt Moody from a few articles in which he stated the new studios would not be creating AAA games, but instead focus on AA or something along those lines. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here thinking on the fact that this doesn't tell me if the games will be good or not. It's kind of the reason I wanted to make this video because I, I just kept saying, oh, they're going to be AA, they're going to be AA. Just like, that's not saying they're going to be good or bad. It's just how much money is put into them and there's so many different things. But anyway, you know, AAA just doesn't equal good and AA doesn't equal bad. You know, that's just the point I really wanted to hammer on. It took me almost eight, nine minutes to get to this point. But nonetheless, I'll end the video here. Um, I definitely could have had this out much sooner, but I'm terrible at procrastinating and honestly I was recording myself so many times that each time this didn't sound right and I'm just saying like, you know, hopefully this is the final cut. Um, I finally got me a capture card, so no more still image backgrounds and perhaps I'll be able to attempt different types of videos and not just be reading the news all the time. Though I was thinking of discussing the recent issues surrounding The Last of Us Part 2, but 
you know, procrastination and low creativity. So we'll see. Nonetheless, I want to say thanks for those who may have made it this far. Uh, give the video a like or a dislike, however you're feeling. And let me know how you feel about the video down below, as well as the video topic. Um, if I was speaking too fast, if I just sound terrible, just let me know. I'm looking for as much feedback as possible. Uh, anyway, uh, take care and enjoy gaming wherever you prefer to play.